Oh. Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and I am just so excited to be bringing you Anno 2205. So I really enjoyed Anno 2070, even though I actually have not finished the campaign for that game. But here we got Anno 2205, so we're 135 years in the future, and uh, we're going to get going and um, take a look at this game. I've already played it a bit. I've started this company here in FinTech Industries, but you can have more than one corporation, so let's go ahead and create a new I'm corporation. I'm glad you accepted my invitation. Samantha Beaumont, Global Union Supervisor of the Lunar Licensing Program. We have a lot to discuss, but first, I'd like to introduce you to your artificial data amalgamating messenger. Hello, Sam Beaumont. Thank you for participating in the Lunar Licensing Program. The program stipulates that your corporation set up operative spaceports to act as bases for a new wave of lunar colonization. You will further assist Global Union in the development of a fusion energy reactor to avert Earth's impending energy crisis. So we're going to the moon, guys. We're going to the moon. Officially, only mega corporations are allowed in the program, but I personally took a stand for you. You just have to sign in with your corporation name. All right, so we're going to call this corporation Centennial Corporate. Ah, I wish it was this longer. Centennial Corp Corporation. <laughs> Centennial. Thanks, but I need to see your corporate logo as well <laughs> for identification purposes. And now we've got these cool logos like this panda bear and this cat <laughs> and this uh, carrot. <laughs> it's just some of the, these are some funky uh, logos. Now, I think I recognize this particular logo. This logo looks down here looks a lot like the logo of the Raiders from uh, Anno 2070. Might not be, but if you go back here. You can get the logo for um, the Global Trust and uh, uh, the Eden Initiative from 2070, but you got to pay some new points. I unlocked this one by getting to level 9 in my other corp, so let's go ahead and use this. My superiors at the Global Union had reservations about you, but I've convinced them. They even decided to allocate you high grade territory for new corporate headquarters. Choose a sector. Yep. And now we're choosing our main sector. So the, the campaign in this game is really neat because you get to choose uh, which place you start at, but then later on, and the ones you don't choose, your competitors will pick. And then later on, if you're, when your corp gets bigger than theirs, you can actually take these over. So on my current game that I've already played, I've done, uh, been doing the Walbrook Basin. Um, I've watched Quill 18 uh, working on Cape Ambar. So let's go over here to the Viridian Coast. So this is a small island um, and we're going to apparently be building this uh, giant statue. So down here they tell you some stuff about it. This is actually, this has the most land at 97,000 acres. It's got 13 mountain building sites, 27 coastal building sites, and its project is for ornamentals. Um, so yeah, um, these mountain and coastal building sites if you've played Almost 2070, there. you just have to negotiate the terms of your contract with Global Union. Then you're familiar with funding those. conditions and the like. In Anno 2070, those were mining sites and coast sites. Now they're just mountain and coast sites, and you can put a variety of stuff on each. So I've been doing a standard game um, in the other one. So let's go ahead and try the advanced game. I'm not going to do the expert game. <laughs> Bankruptcy leads to the permanent loss of your corporation. Let's not do that. Let's do advanced and see what we can do here. You can also go into the advanced settings, and just like Anno 2070, you can um, change these settings and it'll adjust the difficulty. But these difficulty settings actually do do something um, for the game. So let's do. You are now this. entering phase one of the Lunar Licensing Program. The Global Union assigned you territory in Earth's temperate region to establish a spaceport and a base of operations. The construction of a space elevator to Global Union Headquarters is also required. For further instructions, speak to your official contact person. I like these little Global things. Union wishes you success. So we gotta build a space elevator up to this big ring station. 
It's really cool. And the game looks beautiful. Big place. We'll see if it's big enough for ambitions like yours. This is a big place. Look at all this land. One of my colleagues already has high hopes for the area. I'm sure he will ask you to join in his latest prestige project. Indeed. First things first, though. The protocol demands you bring a spaceport into operation here. And here we go. This is our starting place. The spaceport place. building site off the coast is still unstaffed. But as soon as you've built the necessary housing, your construction team will be moving in. All right. So if you play 2070, you'll recognize a bit of this um, the, the idea with the tickers on the left of our various things. But look at this game. We zoom in and look at this stuff. It looks I beautiful. I know it's a lot of things to keep in mind. But Adam compiled you a database where you can access all the information you need. Like, if, yeah, if, if, look at this. There's like a loader here. Like these little loader guys from like Alien. If you remember from um, Anno 2070, your AI was called Eve, and this one it's called Adam. And this is my my little starting ship. Affirmative. It's cool. It's like a little sailboat, but I don't think the sails actually do anything. I think they're just there for decoration. Anyway, here we go. So, if you remember what the warehouses looked like in 2070, this is a gigantic. This is amazing looking. And this is our spaceport over here, and it's a multi-structure. So it's kind of like the monuments that you could build in 2070, but this is like the main quest. All right, so they give us our quest here. Our, we got to build residences, 25 residences, and attract 50 workers and build like one of each of these things. So the construction button's in the bottom left, and we can click on our workers tab, and we can build stuff. Um, we can build streets, we can build residences. I'm going to be drawing a lot of parallels between this game and Anno 2070, because why would you not do that? But they really are quite different. This is one thing I really like about uh, these Anno games is that they're always changing it up. So this island isn't too big, but uh, the next one is. So I built a big road. Now, one of the changes between 2070 and this one is that you don't need to build like a, a, a town hall. You can just start building houses wherever you want them, as long as they're connected with a road. So let's build 10 houses over here. Nice apartments. Makes me look forward to quitting time. They have to have a road on. Um, couldn't quite fit one in the corner there, it doesn't matter. So we got ten houses, but we also need to build a rice farm, a sunflower farm, and a biopolymer factory. Because our houses use this biopolymers, because plastics are so 2070s. <laughs> this game makes a lot of references to 2070, which is awesome. Um, so if I go here, these are like the industrial things. I need to build a sunflower farm to produce bioresin, and then I can build the polymer factory to make the biopolymers. Let's go ahead and do that. And where do I want to do that at? Let's, let's drag a road over here. So cool. I like the... It just, the game is really, really cool. Um, you can use the uh, left and right arrow bracket stunt, you know, the, the period and comma, in order to um, rotate stuff. That fits nicely right there. And now we have plus 10 sunflower um, uh, bioresin. And now we need to build a polymer factory, which will consume that 10 bioresin to produce 10 biopolymers. And we can stick that right here, or I can turn it. And it really doesn't matter. Great. Building material shortages shouldn't be an issue anymore. We're losing money though. We need more houses to produce taxes. I saw Quill 18 play this and he was building it in lots of houses and lots of ten. Construction of new buildings. So possible. I've kind of uh, taken that up as well. So a lot of the stuff from Anno is, uh, is older Anno games is carried over. But one of the cool things about the way this game works, let's go ahead and we need to build this um, race farm. You see, if you if you play Dino 2070, I don't want to waste the space, but you can actually move buildings in this game, which is amazing. Um, so I could put it here for now. Organic food is perceived as needless luxury by many megacorps. Good to see you share the union's perspective. It looks like we are constructing these buildings by like warping them in or something. You can actually press M grab a building and move it. 
what other city builder lets you move your structures without demolishing them? It's just fantastic. I love watching these buildings. Okay, so the way that Anna 20, uh, 2205 handles your items is that unlike 2070, where you were actually storing up items in a warehouse, the game functions completely off of supply and demand mechanics. So right now we are supplying 10 bioresin and consuming 10 bioresin. So this will say zero. It doesn't mean that we don't have any. It means that we are not gaining any or we're not losing any. Right here we have a surplus of three rice, I mean organic food. It's not going to do anything for us, but we have uh, a surplus of it. And we also now have a surplus of biopolymers. So these are all based on supply and demand, which actually makes managing these chains of supplies easier. Because it, you can you can tell at a glance exactly how much of something you have. So we're going to build those houses. Now we have 25 houses. And all we're doing is waiting for these workers to, to move in. Now if you hold the plus button on your numpad, you can speed the game up. But all you need to do to make more people move in is just build some more houses. And then they'll move in faster. Look at this. I really like looking at all these things. There's a little Your kid there. Your construction crew is one of the first ready. There's a little kid running around the, the house. Your competitors will try to catch up. All these people walking around. For the next construction stage, we will need qualified ground staff to operate the spaceport. Make sure to adhere to union standards while providing the required infrastructure. Right. So the reason that we needed those workers was so they could work the spaceport. Now they're working the spaceport, but we need uh, to build the frame. We need to have a thousand operators. So, like Anno has always done, you upgrade these houses. Attention. Under provision of specific consumer goods detected. Ah, so we need clean water. Uh, now that we've supplied them with I their organic like food, they want water. And the way we get water is with a desalination plant. Which is right here. And we're going to put it right there. A coastal tile. Coastal spot. we got to build a road there. You need this desalination plant. These days, it's the only way to come by drinkable water. I can believe that. This is the future. This is after the events of Anno 2070, which, if you remember, uh, massive flooding caused uh, these the, the, the Earth to basically just be a giant chain of islands now. Um, so desalination facilities are now the primary method of acquiring water, which is probably going to happen uh, in the future. We might not even have to wait until uh, 2205. That could happen soon. Okay, so we need 200 workers and we need an info drone, but we can't get that until we get the 200 workers. So we just need to build more houses. We can put those there, but there's no way to connect them. So we'll put the houses there. We'll start building up another row of five of uh, ten houses here. Put roads on them. Of course, this game, the Anno games have always, at least the ones I've played, I've only ever played 2070 in this one. I've always had really good road. Um, building AIs, as long as you start from the right angle, All right, you know, that complete the road for you. Come on, look at the tool, right click, let's build stuff. Now, um, over here on the mini-map, you can see a little star. Every one of these starting sectors has this special project you can do. Good day to you. Work has started on a project that will lead the way for generations to come. Will you rise to the occasion? Yes, I will. More than ever, there are challenges to be faced in this era. What the people need right now is a confident, steadfast leader. And you can help us convey that message. Are we? we want to commemorate the first wave taking place a century ago. With the lunar licensing program starting, what better time is there to remind humanity of its potential? Building a breathtaking monument is a tremendous responsibility. Beaumont already speaks highly of you. And when you're done, I'm sure everyone else will, too. Right. So we're not building a statue of him. This is the leader of the Global Union. Uh, but we're not building a statue of him. We're building a statue of the second wave monument. All right. So it looks like it'll give us some interesting stuff that we can have. Uh... Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to um, click on this. Start with a bang. Attach Global Union Arms drone to your command ship. Use the drone to destroy the world. How is the situation developed? So that's a good wind ship. So we come down here and click on our ship. We come up here and we can attach this drone. While that's going on, we can do other things. Um, we need some more houses apparently for our, our work. 
increase. So we build another string of houses. Now, this game is much more about just peaceful building and managing your supply chains than it was in 2070. Because there aren't going to be any attacks on this map. Instead, this game has separate uh, missions New blueprints ready for implementation. that are the uh, combat missions. On our way. So now we uh, go over here and use this drone to destroy these boulders. Boom! It's going to target the other drone boulders on anything. So on this map screen, there will never be any actual combat, as far as I know. To know you're willing to do what has to be done. All right. An urgent matter. I'd be glad to assign it to your corporation. Okay, so I need to maintain a credit balance of two thousand. That means this number here, credit balance, which is my income. So I need to start making. I need to get my income up to two thousand. So we're going to go back into our uh, main quest for a while. Now that we have enough workers, we can connect the info drone. This is basically the information center from Anno Twenty Seventy. And it is a bit different, however. Like, in Anno 2070, all of these public buildings had these big round areas of effect. That's not the case anymore. Instead, they basically have, like, a heat map based on the road connections. So if you look at the road right now, you can see that all the roads in the city are blue. If I move this over to here, you'll notice that the further it gets away from the, the town, the, the more gray those roads become. That's like the coverage of this info drone. So I want this info drone to be close enough to this place so that those lines are, um, the roads are blue, so it has good coverage. I'm going to put it right here. A broad range of information services. This will enable your employees to develop their interests as well as their skills. So if we click on the info drone, we can see that it is currently supplying 10 information. Oh, we don't have enough energy. Our energy is in negative, so we need to build a wind park, which works exactly the same way as it did in the original um, in 2070, except that it needs a road condition. Can I fit it right here? Yes, I can. And it needs a road. It needs a road connection. In 2070, these did not need road connections, and they were a lot smaller. But these do need road connections. Okay, so we have the, the our um, energy now. I should also explain this over here. This is our our workers. So in Anno 2070, the only way right, we're going to upgrade some people press A, you can access the promotion. promotions. And we can just click and drag over a bunch of houses and promote All them. systems online. Can't wait to get started. New blue. Remarkable progress. You've assembled construction crews and ground personnel faster than I was expecting. So, you are more than ready for the first major hurdle. So now we have these cool looking houses. The program demands you connect your city with the Global Union Space Station via a space elevator. Yep. So far, only megacorps like the Big Five use such technology. But I'm sure you have the same potential. We know the rice from the negative on rice. So you just take a look at that, and uh, if it says that you're in the negative, you uh, you build another thing. You, you boost your production. This might not actually have helped me. I wanted to put it right here. Just go like that, and we'll just go ahead and demolish this road. <laughs> and that truck will just disappear. Those are just there for show. There, so now we go from minus one to plus four. So as soon as you place a building down like this, it'll show you right above it what the current supply is for that uh, resource, which is really good. So this game really makes it easy for you to manage your, um, your stuff. And now that we have our operators, we actually have access to a new type of residence. Instead of just these individual houses, we can build these residential complexes, which house 20 people for two biopolymers and one constructive block, which is really good. So we're going to do that. But first, we need to actually be able to build these constructive block guys. So to build a constructor bot, we need five nano ceramics and five cobalt. And thankfully, the cobalt and nano ceramic mines each produce five. So we can go, we can get by with just one of each. Dang! Look at that. See that? I love how it changes the environment. It looks so cool. 
Okay, so how do I want to connect this up? Let's build a road right here. Like what I want to do is put some houses in here. I can't put this here, oh, but I'd like to. Let's once again let's move this road. It does cost you some money, but who cares? We're gonna put a residential complex right there. We can't. But we'll be doing that later. So now I need a feldspar quarry, which has to go on a mountain tile. Where is a mountain tile? There's one over there. I have one over here. This one is already next to our road, so let's go ahead and build this one. Look at that. Look how much it changes the environment. So cool. Now it's got a road. This is going to eat up a lot of power, so we actually need more power. Now, just like in 2070, we don't want to overlap these things because they'll produce less power. So let's go ahead and stick it over ah, here. Ah, I knew there was something going on here. Nick Papadakis, Papadakis Enterprises. You want a good deal? Just come to my warehouse. I click and drag over and I can upgrade all of the upgradable houses in one fell swoop. Okay, so now we need of new building types, vitamin drinks for these people. So if you haven't played Anna before, the main gist of this is every time you know you get to the next level, your people want something else. So we need 16 fruits to make 12, and this produces 8. So we need two fruit plantations to run this. Company stocks advance in price. Ah, but we can't do that yet, because first we have to produce these constructor blocks. So we need to build this thing. Attention. Under provision ah. of specific consumer goods detected. Wish you could put it there. So this thing is big. And we can fit it over here. Good. You've gathered the components needed for the elevator. I mean, I could put it anywhere. I could Only put it the over elevator here. cable requires special materials you can't produce. But I arranged for a delivery. This is currently using, oh, a lot of energy. We need more energy. Trying to keep pace with us is futile. Lei Sheng electricity moves at the speed of light. <laughs> moves at the speed of light. Yeah, so that's another uh, corporation. If I click over here, we can see these are the big five. Um, Samon International, which is a food company. Usoyev uh, Inc., Cassian Industries. Ibarra Foxconn, which is a technology company. And Lei Sheng, which is a power company. And as our rating goes up, we can actually overtake these people and these companies actually become better than them. Okay, so we've got our production of um, these guys, these mini bots. So the what, what we can do now is we could build a residential complex right here. There we go, now we have a residential complex. Seems like work is fun. If I upgrade that, you can see it's cool. It's like a little, it's like a little uh, apartment complex with some pathways between them. And I really like how these these are all connected with pathways. It just looks really nice. Okay, so we need to build two fruit plantations to run our uh, to run a uh, vitamin drink factory. There isn't any good place to put it down here, so let's go ahead and actually place them over here. We need to to get production up to, um... oh, now I don't have enough workers either. Need more houses. Let's go ahead and build this down here. A clever move seen to your staff's good health. Benefits like that make you a more attractive employer. Now, Warning. Human resources insufficient. Yeah, human resources are insufficient. In the in Anno twenty seventy, the only thing that your workers and stuff did was unlock uh, buildings. In Anno twenty two oh five, they also give us these worker resources. Construction options expanded. And uh, all of your production buildings require workers. So I think it's really cool because it, it gives the workers another purpose other than just uh, generating money. So we're going to go ahead and instead of building another wind park, we're going to build this tidal power station, which requires one of these slots. 
We don't have enough. There we go. Yeah, Alright, let's So this is actually producing now um, a lot more uh, power. And it's so cool, look at this. It's so neat. I love looking at all the buildings. Like the first time you build a building, like some of the best it's one of the like the best parts about it is just looking at what it looks like. You get to see it. You can put some houses in there. We can't quite fit any houses in here, but we could fit in there. Are some small parks. Just to brighten the area up with a little greener. It's so neat. And because you can move stuff around, you could always adjust your city, put in some more ornaments, make it look cool. I love it. Okay, so we're back up to positive on that. One of the things we're lacking is we're lacking in, in our income. Our income is not good. And we just need a lot more resonance in order to fix that. I think we could go. We could do with some more biopolymer production, just because I'm using so much of it. I'm just using it too fast, and uh, stuff can't keep up. Like we're ready for a promotion, but we don't have enough biopolymer. Didn't expect the management to show up. Please come in. I can hold plus button. I can speed the game up. It's just not producing a whole lot. We're at plus 10, but it's not good enough. So let's go ahead and, and, and lay down some more of these. Fit that in there. Oh, now we're negative on uh, transport, so we got to build one of these. A transport. Um, put that there. They cost a lot of money in upkeep, though, so it's, it's, I don't like having to build them. Upkeep is pretty big. I don't want to do that, obviously. So now we're getting double the uh, construction components, and now we're in negative on money. Now that we have twice as much construction component income, we should be good. I need some more. And this is the game. This is this is uh, you know, building more of what you need when you need it. Can I actually get a road over there? Can't get a little over there, so I can't put it there. Maybe another one of these, though. So let's go ahead and put it right here. Maybe the other way over. There we go. Now, let's talk about the next few steps. Yeah, I got a negative credit balance. I need a positive credit balance. And that just means more houses. These things are great because I'm making plenty of these constructive lots. Because I, I, I'm I running a, a surplus See? of constructive lots, but a negative on um, Biopolymers, it makes more sense for me to build. Um, Your global market things. share has increased. Increased, but I still like to build these. You know, a good mix of them looks nice. It's about to four. I just, I've, I've, I've been playing this game for a while now, and I really like it. I think it's a really nice uh, change. Yeah, we need another one of these desalination facilities. So, we need another coastal spot. Great. There we go. Now, everything's up, up to zero or positive. Excellent. Biopolymers are just kicking our butt for some reason. I didn't have this problem last time. Maybe because they cost a bit more biopolymers. I was playing on easy before. You know how that goes. Okay, so... 
We just need to get to a thousand operators. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this game. This game is really good so far. I, just, I really like it. It's definitely a change from 2070. Like you'll notice, you don't have to build... I don't have to build a sunflower farm and then build a, a bunch of other stuff around it. But we'll get to that later. There's actually a, a similar yet very different and very cool system that replaces that. But it's not unlocked yet at this point in the campaign. So I hope you guys are enjoying um, Anno 2205. I gotta remember what the numbers were. Um, I am planning on, on make, doing more of this game because I love it so much. Already love it. And um, I hope you guys too, do too. So stay tuned for more uh, future videos. I'm Sidonal H and I'm signing out.